your rain prices are dropping, you're considering dropping your fertilizer rates, should you do it? No. Today, I'll be visiting with Keith Byerly with the Mosaic Company, and we'll be discussing four reasons why it's a bad idea to reduce your fertilizer rates. I'm Sherry Cook. I am a 30-year veteran in the egg industry, and we're gonna help you learn more about your farming operations and crop nutrition. First thing to consider is crop removal and crop nutrient usage. As yield increases, our nutrient demand increases as well. And the fact of the matter is over the last 20 years, we've seen that average yield increase by probably 20, 25 bushels in most areas for corn. Keith, with 60% of a farmer's yield coming from their fertility decisions or what they have in the soil, we obviously don't want them to cut back, right? On fertility in the fall. What are some things that you'd recommend? Starting with something as simple as realistic yield goal is an incredibly important part of this. If you haven't updated a yield goal in the last 20 years, you're already 20% behind in your crop input decision. You go on top of that and decide that you're gonna further reduce your crop inputs from there. Now we're talking about being 30, 40, 50% behind the eight ball from day number one. So we go higher yields, we're taking more out of the soil. What's happened to that soil profile? What we see pretty consistently across the last 20 years is that continent-wide, 45 to 50% of our soils are deficient in phosphorus and it's very similar in potassium. So one out of every two acres as we go across the farm is in theory deficient on those nutrients today in a large part because we lack accurate yield goals to start with and we don't true ourselves up at the end of that growing season. We don't go back and look at our production versus our yield goal and add that to the next year's crop input decision. Having that solid foundation to start with is always the first step in this. Number two, know your soil test levels. I really think it's important as you look at that soil test and as you're preparing for next season to understand what you decide to do with one nutrient carries over and influences other nutrients as well. So if I'm making a decision to cut potassium or a lime source out of my decision-making process for the year, and I've already got a low pH or I'm cutting that potassium with my nitrogen, I'm actually influencing my nitrogen use efficiency or my use efficiency of other nutrients by dropping just one thing out of that equation. So it's really important to look at balancing that. If we've got a bunch of deficiencies already in our fields, cutting back fertilizer rates is just gonna further put pressure on what's already a difficult situation for our plants to get the crop nutrition it needs. That soil test tells us exactly where we're at. And this is where 4R nutrient management really comes into this conversation as well. Absolutely. We don't always think about 4Rs beyond their environmental aspect, but when we talk about budgeting, the ability to take that 4R mindset into variable rate technology and make sure that we're getting the right rate in the right place, and especially when we're trying to do it around a budget, being sure that we're placing nutrients where those deficiencies are, taking care of our hidden hungers, and then trusting our eyes as we scout out there during the season, looking for those deficiencies. At the end of the day, you can't feed a room full of teenagers when they come into your house after football practice if there's no groceries in the pantry. Right. And that's what we're really talking about here is making sure that there's groceries in the pantry. The third factor is what's your fertilizer ROI compared to your other inputs? Fertility accounts for about 60% of our yield, but it only accounts for around 20% of our budget. All right, let's do some math. So just some raw numbers, break it down for us. Let's say that I did some shopping and I found a $50 a ton discount on fertilizer. I might save $5 an acre, depending on my use rate. At the same time, if I can capture a 10 cent increase in my grain price at the same fertilizer cost, I've increased my profit by $20 an acre. So a four to one ROI for focusing on my grain marketing over finding those bargains in fertilizer. Nothing to sneeze at. Nothing to sneeze at, that's like real money. No, you can't beat that ROI. Yep, three to one, I'll take that any day. The fourth and final factor is how do we optimize your nutrient use efficiency? 
It all comes down to maintaining the right balance for proper crop nutrition out there. We have to have the right stuff in place at the right time for that crop to have what it needs to grow. And any decisions that we make to back off here or to reallocate there are ultimately gonna come back and, and impact how successful we are in meeting our true yield goal and having soils that are prepared to feed our crops for multiple years to come beyond just this year. Amen to that. All right, I get it guys, it's tough. Commodity prices are going down, other prices are going up, our inputs continue to increase. One of the things we learned today was that reducing your fertilizer rates, bad idea. History and data proves it. It's best to keep your fertility program balanced. Be sure to talk to your local agronomist or your consultant to make sure you're making the right decisions. Dive deeper into the data and download the white paper below to learn more. Thanks for joining me today on Advanced Crop Nutrition. We'll see you next time on hopefully a less windy day. We learned about the four R's earlier today. Now we're gonna learn about the four D's. Dive deeper. We wanna dive deeper into the data. <laughs> dive deeper into the data and download. Okay, <laughs> Jesus. That's a mouth twister. <laughs> If you're looking to stay up to date on advanced crop nutrition, it's all on cropnutrition.com. And don't forget, subscribe to the ACNI newsletter while you're there. <laughs>